Hello, this is Brian Mounts. I run TopOffMyCoffee.com and this channel, and today I'm coming to you with a video about those two coffee makers right there. That is the Curd K Select next to the cabinet, and kind of floating in the middle closer to us is the Curd K Elite. Both of these coffee makers have been out for some time now, and uh, in my opinion, they're getting replaced by the Supreme and some of the newer models that have been released by Curd over the past, like, I don't know, since around 2019. But these are still two pretty good coffee makers and best sellers in the Keurig line. So I want to cover them right now, cover the differences between them. And then a little bit later in future videos down the road, I'm going to be comparing the K-Elite to some of the newer modern coffee makers like the K-Supreme and the K-Supreme Plus. If you watched the video that I produced not too long ago and published here on the channel, it was the setup instructions for the K-Elite, um, then you'll have a good idea of kind of what to expect up here. Basically this control panel is one of the more complicated looking control panels of any of the Keurig coffee makers that I have tried. Despite the fact that it's pretty complicated looking, it's actually not that complicated at all. Once you peel this sticker off, it looks a lot simpler. Next door to it here I got the K-Select. The K-Select is actually a pretty good coffee maker. I like it a lot because it gives you the 6 ounce brew size and it gives you a strong button. It will also stay hot, the internal tank will stay hot for a couple hours after you use it or after you turn it on, which means you can get some coffee pretty quick from it. Everything about that is exactly the same over here except for you get this extra 4 ounce setting, which is kind of crazy. I've been using that 4 ounce setting mostly as uh, a rinse setting. So after I brew a cup of coffee, I do another one right afterwards. I mean, I pull the coffee pod out and then I do a 4 ounce setting just to rinse it out. You do get this hot water button, which you don't get over here on the K Select. I, initially, I thought that was kind of cool. But quite honestly, I think that is fluff. I, it's not necessary. If I brew, if I want to brew hot water, like I just said, I open this up, I take my spent capsule out, my spent K pod, K cup out, close it up, and then I just brew a six ounce cup of pure water, and that rinses the whole thing out. Now with that out of the way, I've basically rinsed my whole thing out and I don't need this hot water button. Certainly you can use it, if you push it, then it just tells you to do that and it's exactly the same thing. So to me that is uh, unnecessary complication. Now with that out of the way, the other obvious difference between the two machines is the K-Select does not have an iced button. But the K Elite does in here, looking at the ice button right there. From my experimentation with that ice button, I believe the coffee maker is brewing the coffee on a lower temperature for the first 80% or so of the cup, and then the last little bit of the iced coffee that comes out of the machine ends up being about normal temperature. So when you're brewing it over ice, on average your temperature is a little bit lower and it's not a big difference it's about five degrees difference when i put the thermometer in the cup uh, when i use the ice button the ice button on this gives you about six and a quarter ounces of coffee it's actually slightly more than this but nowhere close to eight ounces. Like it literally is just about six and a quarter to six and a half ounces instead of the six ounce cup setting in my opinion, this iced button is also fluff. It's just a little bit pointless. If I were brewing over ice, considering the fact that this is such a small difference, I might as well just use the six ounce setting. Over here, you don't have the ice button and you also don't have a way of changing the temperature, except for you do, there is a hidden way to do it. The K-Select is one of the coffee makers in Keurig's line that gives you a high altitude setting. Now there's no button for it, but you can activate the high altitude setting very easily and it decreases the temperature on this about 5 degrees during the brew cycle, which is pretty much what's going on over here. So 
If you make iced coffee frequently, all you got to do is activate the high altitude setting and then brew a six ounce cup. And it's basically the same thing as this. Now you do get this bigger strong button than this, but it does the same thing. And from my experimentation, when I brew an eight ounce cup of coffee with this and an eight ounce cup of coffee with this, they brew in almost identical times. It takes about, oh, about six to eight seconds for the coffee to start coming out, assuming the tank, the internal tank is warmed up already. And then it brews in about 39 seconds or so. Once you add the strong button in on both machines, it adds roughly 30 extra seconds to the water to grind contact time. Basically, both machines are operating exactly the same or so close to it that nobody is ever going to notice the difference. Basically, when you use the strong button on both of these machines, assuming an eight ounce cup, you're really only looking at about a minute and five seconds for water to grind contact time, which really isn't that ver that much. Uh, the newer case of Prime models give you a five point needle. So you are uh, saturating your coffee grounds uh, more evenly and quickly and uh, the water flows through the K-cup slower. So it just tastes better, it literally does. Both of these machines use the old school style single needle and they also have this old school style, you know, what is it? What would you call that? A hinged lid there that just kind of pops up and open. That's the old style Keurigs. Um, I prefer the newer style ones because when I take a K-cup and I put it in there, I like to manually pop the bottom hole with my fingers as I think it gives a better seal but it's really almost impossible to do that with this one. Look at that, it like wants to eat my hand when I do it. Uh, I do prefer the other newer machines that don't have this hinged lid, so both of those have that. When you get really down granular and just start going into this settings button, this is really the only thing that I like a lot about this machine. So when you turn it on, you can open up the settings uh, you get a digital clock. Most of the Kurgs don't offer you a digital clock. That's not what I really like about it, though. What I really like about it is that you can... I mean, this is mild, mildly something that I like. I, you can set your temperature to your liking. This is awesome. You can set this to turn on the internal heating tank at a certain time of day. I can set this to turn on the heat and start warming up the internal tank, let's say at 6.20 in the morning. Now, if I don't come down until seven o'clock in the morning, it's, it's gonna still be hot. So it literally is, I just push a button and it comes out six seconds later. I don't have that in this, and I don't have that auto on feature on any other Keurigs that I've ever tried, or at least certainly not the modern Keurigs. Some of the older ones, possibly, the ones that are discontinued. Um, but all of the new machines, none of them have that feature other than the K Elite. I really like that. You also have this, this moon icon is the same thing as this auto off. So the K Select and some of the other machines have this auto off where once, like right now, the internal tank is warm and that will turn off after two hours if I don't use it or if I don't push the button. This will also turn off every two hours, but you can change the setting. So if I want to, I can go into that moon icon setting in here and change it so it only turns off like after 15 minutes or or 45 minutes or an hour and a half. I can choose in 15 minute increments all the way up to two hours. I like that. I just keep it at two hours, but you know, if I was getting up and heading off to work, um, I wouldn't necessarily want that thing to stay on for two hours. I could set it for 30 minutes and be fine. The high altitude setting on this machine is really easy to tell when you're using it. I've got it off. Now it's on. Now it's off. 
So that's really great. This is also one of the only machines that you can tell when you have the high altitude setting on. Um, this machine, you can turn it on and off, but there's no way to tell what it is. You just got to kind of know that it's on. This one, you can tell very easily. When the high altitude setting is on, this will brew at the lower 187 degree temperature. When you turn it off, then you can change the temperature anywhere between 187 and 192. Now, my guess is that the internal heating element is doing the exact same thing here. There's just no display to tell me what the temperature actually is. Because these two machines are functionally working so similarly, I really believe that that high altitude setting is probably identical also. Um, I can't tell a difference uh, using my thermometer, uh, so I have to believe that they're about the same. I do like that you can see that the high altitude is on or off, but even if you couldn't see it, all you're doing when you're putting on that high altitude is you're bringing it down to 187. That's really all that's happening. And since you have temperature control on this, so, you know, in the settings, you can go and put it on 187. That functionally is the same thing as turning on the high altitude. So anyway, what this comes down to is which one are you going to buy? In my opinion, the strong button is important and you get it in both of these machines. The K Select is almost always, I've never seen the K Elite sold for cheaper than the K Select. The K Select is almost always going to be cheaper than the K Elite and probably noticeably so. You get the high altitude uh, setting with the K Select, you just don't get a button for it. Because you have the high altitude setting on the K Select, then that also means that you have the ability to change the brew temperature. It's just not so obvious to do so. Now, the K Select does have a slightly smaller reservoir, it's about maybe two 8 ounce cups smaller. Uh, you're going to notice the difference, but not very much. Um, the price of that Kaylee is going to be more. You do get that, that iced button, but I think the iced button doesn't really provide you anything new. I would recommend that most people get the K-Select over the K-Elite. I don't think the extra-ness, the, ex, the extra scuff with the K-Elite uh, is justifies the added expense. That's just my opinion. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos coming down the road. If you've got any questions about this, these machines, put them down in the comments and I'll try my best to get around to answering them as fast as I can. I hope you're going to go, go ahead and watch this video coming up because it's going to help you learn a little bit more about making the best coffee you possibly can from a Keurig machine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.